All I want is a clean home directory. Is that too much to ask? You know how there's that standard for config files to be in home slash dot config, for cache files to be in home slash dot cache, and for other general data files to be in home slash dot local slash share. This gives you a nice and clean home directory and also makes it very easy to exclude certain files from your backups. Let's say you don't want to include your cache. Let's say you're backing up your configs through some other method. This makes it very easy to do. But this standard hasn't always existed. This has been around since around 2003 with the XDG base directory specification. Now it's been about 20 years since this has existed. And I've gotten into the history and the intricacies of how it works plenty of times in the past. So if you want that information, go and check those videos out. All that is important today is the fact that the standard exists and the directories that are being used. Now, as you can probably tell from your own directories, many projects do support the standard. And there is a giant list of these projects over on the Arch Wiki. This is by no means a complete list. It is just notable things and things that people have actually added onto the list. But it is a lot of things. Some of these projects just support things out of the box with no tweaking needed whatsoever. Some of these will spawn the folder in the home directory, but then support just moving it. Some of them require some launch option changes. Some of them require some option changes, but all of these applications can be made to work properly. And there are some really useful tools out there like XDG Ninja, which will help you go and list out the applications that you can go and fix this with. But no matter how much you do, there is always going to be these other applications that have either partial support, this is a big list as well, or have no support there are a lot of projects out there that are just random things on GitHub that maybe a couple of people use, maybe a lot of people use, that just do not support the standard. And sure, a lot of times you can get rid of these projects, but there are also these massive projects that everybody has heard of that don't respect the standard. And some of these have had issues open for a really, really long time. For example, this is bash, use xdg dirs instead of home. This was opened in 2012 and is marked as won't fix. Bash is one of these ones where it's partially supported, where some of the files can be moved, but there's always going to be a couple of leftovers. The main reason for not fixing this basically is its historical behavior and the whole world is not Linux. But nobody is asking for this to be the only option. People are asking for this to be an option. And the funny thing about this is it's not like nobody even tried to fix it. There was a patch for this all the way back in 2014, but nobody wanted to merge it. This is dbus open 12 years ago. Use runtime dirs for home slash dot dbus auto launch crap. Now the nice thing about dbus is there is dbus broker now, which doesn't have this problem. But the main version of dbus, 12 years, open. This is Perl. This one is a little more recent from 2021. Add environment variable to customize dot cpan path. This is the most famous one. Firefox opened 19 years ago. Support for the free desktop.org XDG base directory specification. And this one is still getting the occasional comment here and there, but most people aren't trying to offer anything useful. It is just being like, hey, fix the problem. And because Firefox doesn't support it, you shouldn't be surprised that Thunderbird has the exact same problem. This one only from 11 years ago. And the last one I want to mention is a game that some of you may or may not play, that being Mind Test. Opened in 2013, XDG base directory specs. Now don't let the closed fool you, this is marked as won't add. While I'm not happy with the won't fix and all of the files being in the wrong location, I honestly find that less annoying than the partial support. Because when you have no support, everything is going to be in the wrong location. With partial support, a lot of the time it looks like you can fix it, 
until you get down to like one or two little files at the end that are going to be put into the wrong location and there's just nothing that can be done about it. So why is it such a challenge for this standard to get implemented? Let's start with the random projects on GitHub. Like me, you're probably the sort of person who knows about the intricacies of your system. You go out of your way to like find standards and things like that and have a deep understanding of what's going on on Linux. But it might surprise you to know this, but there are a lot of people out there who even make Linux software who don't have as deep of an understanding of random things like this. And there are some developers out there who are completely unaware that the standard exists. They know the config files are supposed to go in your config directory, but they don't know why that's the case. It's just, oh, they go in the config directory and that's about as far as it goes. So when it comes to the other files, you might see those dumped in places that they really shouldn't be dumped in. Also, while we might like to think that everyone out there is using Linux who is developing this software, there are a lot of developers out there who are cross-platform developers. They are working on Windows, they are working on Mac, using these languages and using these toolkits that work across these different operating systems. And they may be unaware of standards that exist on those other systems. They might know the standards that exist on macOS or the standards that exist on Windows, but don't know they're analogous to the standards that exist on Linux. But even if you are fully aware of the XDG specification, like in the case of Mindtest, it's not like the specification doesn't have its drawbacks. For example, sorry for the late response. This seems unnecessarily complicated while separating the user-specific mind test files, config file, mods, worlds, etc., making them harder to find. And while XDG is one standard, there are many standards, and the older one mind test adheres to is that program foo looks for its files in the directory home slash dot foo. Any particular reason for XDG. And this developer is correct that this is another standard that exists. When they say that many standards exist, that's not really the case. Really, there's only two. You have XDG and you have dump things in the home directory. Dumping things in your home directory is the more traditional method of doing things prior to XDG. And there's also this complaint here. For most applications, regular users don't ever want to touch the configuration files or directories. I wouldn't say they don't ever want to touch it. Usually they set it once and then never bother configuring the application again because they've set it up the way they want to set it up. But for mine test, it's almost common practice and having to jump one extra directory level for that sucks. Also for mind test, configuration and mods are commonly accessed and by the XDG standards that would be in a different place equals very inconvenient. But this person did support moving the cache stuff into a different place. The cache is probably the least controversial thing as most people accept you really don't want to back up your cache. When we are talking very simple applications that have a config file and then maybe access some cache, Working with the XDG standard is very, very simple, but Firefox, much like Mindtest, is a fairly complex application. Now it is necessary to define which files go to which directories. For example, for Firefox.mozilla slash Firefox slash profile currently contains a mess of configuration, data, and cache files that must be separated and organized into something like this, where the config files go into the config path, data files go into the data path, cache goes into the cache path. It is easy to define what should go into the cache directory, but for everything else, there are some ambiguities about what is configuration and what is data. Extensions, dictionaries, Chrome and password files are a few things that may fit in either directory depending on how you consider them. But also, if you have some new file that comes in, now you have to decide and have a meeting, have a discussion about where that new file is going to go. And maybe once again, it has some ambiguities and it's unclear exactly what should happen. So for projects like this, they just dump everything into one directory and no longer think about it. But hey, let's say you do decide to support it. 
what do you do now? Do you instantly migrate over, breaking everybody's configuration? Do you have a grace period where you support both of them, but then deprecate the old version? Do you actively support both of them going into the future, which might be fine for a simple application where you just have a config file, but for something like Firefox, could actually be a lot of extra work that doesn't need to be there. And even if you do have a grace period, even if it's like five or 10 years long, expect that as soon as it ends, there is going to be some bug reports saying that their configuration no longer works. And you have to explain, okay, this is what you need to do. Move the file here, move the file there. That's a lot of work. When something is a really long-standing tradition, it can be very, very difficult to uproot. This is why it takes so long for anything to be removed from the kernel. You know, the whole don't break user space thing. It's not don't break user space, it's don't break things that people are using. And there's always going to be a couple of people here and there that keep using something that's deprecated for years and years into the future. But in many cases, you're just not gonna get to that point because there's always going to be developers who just don't care about there being a standard. Generally, I disapprove of changing everything according to some external standard. This is every standard. Usually you are not the standards body. If we change anything, let's just do a minimal amount of things that are genuinely helpful. People are used to how things are. Whether how things are makes sense according to some external standard is irrelevant. So downvote for the original request, but I'm okay with anything that is helpful and not disruptive. But there is one thing, or more like one category, that is really helping to deal with this problem. That being the rise of containerized applications, primarily Flatpak and Snap, but Distribox fits in this category as well, where Flatpak and Snap will add one folder into your home directory, but they add one folder for every Flatpak and for every Snap. So if you install, you know, 30 flat packs, you don't have 30 folders in your home directory, you just have that one. And the same is true for snaps. And then Distribox, you know, basically the same thing as well. Everything just lives inside the Distribox. So a lot of these projects like Firefox, like Steam, that are basically never going to be fixed, if you run them in a container, basically the problem goes away. But thanks for listening to my rant. Let me know your thoughts. Do you care about the XDD standard? Do you just let your home directory fill up with nonsense? To be fair, my home directory, even with the standard, is still getting a little bit messy. Um, occasionally, I use it as my downloads directory. So that's the problem. Anyway, let me know. So if you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over, these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon Scribes the Leap Link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and...